What's up you guys? My parents are here. <laughs> they live here. I just took over their house, but they're here. Like they're meeting you guys. Say hi. 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 <laughs> hi. <laughs> so I asked you guys on Instagram what you wanted to know from my parents and we'll get to that, but I think we should start with like how I was as a teenager. So this is my stepmom, Mary. This is my dad, Jim. And I moved in with them when I was 12? 13. 13. I must have just turned 13. You did, yeah, it was, yeah. So I just turned 13 and I was living with my mom before that and I got in a lot of trouble and my mom just really couldn't handle it anymore. So she's like, take her. Oh my God, I can't do it. <laughs> so they, they said yes. And I don't even know if I could do that because taking on a 13 year old that already is in trouble, cops are being, cops are bringing her home. She's partying at 13. I don't know if I could handle it. So what was I like? at 13 years old. I didn't know that at the time. She didn't I, tell you all of it? No. <laughs> My mom lied. No, we we were not told that you were in all that trouble. <laughs> God, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, sh no. I'm learning we, stuff. So I just, we just uh, brought you in and uh, seemed pretty normal at first when you got, seemed you normal. know, because, but uh, you know, then it just, <laughs> Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> so, I was normal at first. Um, yeah, I think you were trying to, you know, kind of impress us a little bit at first. Feel you out. Yeah. And I, I would much. come here on visits. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. but we, it wasn't full time. It's different when you have a kid on the weekends versus having the kid full time, yeah. you know? So, what was the first moment where you kind of knew something was wrong? You knew I was using drugs or was had the wrong friends or what was the first sign for you uh, that's kind of hard to answer um, I think maybe the first time that I knew something was really wrong was when you you know first had that tooth problem and I got you some medication for the pain and the pills just kind of came up missing yeah and Hyd hydrocodone I, yeah and then I just kind of I was really skeptical after that. I really kind of put my <laughs> guard, you know, I put my feelers out much more, like watching, yeah. kind of keeping an eye on you a lot more than I did. I took the whole bottle. Yeah. I took the whole bottle. Did you notice anything at first? We tried to deny it. Tried to deny it. Because it's my kid, so nothing could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But I could tell you that, uh, it was difficult because our marriage was at risk. I knew something had to change. And when you left at 18 years old, I knew that maybe she'll come around. That's my hope. And here you are today. I love you. I love him. <laughs> hopefully you guys can hear him. I'm, I'm always like talking loud, but hopefully you guys can hear them. Um, I knew that you were in denial. I was very clever and I manipulated them and it put a lot of strain on their marriage. So he didn't want to admit anything was wrong, yep. but Mary knew like there's something wrong because she was, she was with me more. Mm -hmm. So he works until late and you know, she's with me for four hours extra a day before he got home. So I knew that he was in denial about it. They would fight all the time. And I thought, this is great. When they're yelling at each other, they're not yelling at me. So yay. I, I know that Mary would yell at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got very yeah. mad at times yelling at him, come on, you have to know something is wrong. But it just... It didn't really had register I, with me I couldn't times. get him to believe that something was up, that you needed more help than we could give you. I think that's normal. You know, like, it's, it's normal to be in denial because it's like, I'm your kid. You don't want to admit something's wrong. But you were seeing me a lot more, so I get it. I think the first question that my subscribers had for you guys was, you know, where did it start? And um, how did you try to help me? I tried in several ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, she I would did. I would take you, you know, I would take you to wherever you needed to go. When you were on parole, I drove you to Delhi, just you and I. Um, at that point, I can't remember if Anna was born yet. She was she came shortly after you 
steps were there. Yeah. You came at 13. I remember she was we born. went to Delhi one time. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we went. We, you know, I took you to 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 Pearls. Mm -hmm. I went and grabbed you from Walton several times. Because I would leave. Because you would, you wouldn't tell me where you were. You'd never show back up. Like you'd leave. You're supposed to be home at a certain time because of that parole. Mm -hmm. I never saw, like, you wouldn't show up. So I had to make phone calls, find out where you were. So I don't know how I knew you were in Walton. Uh, someone must have called me and let me know because off to Walton Snitches. I would go and get you because... <laughs> someone ratted me out. There were, you know, the, that environment over there, the places I picked you up from, very 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 sketch bad <laughs> very sketchy um yeah. so did i fail drug tests on parole absolutely not and i never knew how you were able to pass them because you know when they came to the house you were ready for them i guess yeah because you passed them every single time every even time. when we went to parole up in delhi you passed those too and i'm like so oh, that made okay. my so dad think. She's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, she's fine. She's sober. She's fine. Even I was no. like, oh, well, so, you know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe maybe she's not so bad, but. <laughs> I was. So what I would do is I would drink gallons of water, green tea, take vitamins, and I would, I would detox my system. And I knew pills only stayed in my system for a day or two. It was weed that was harder for me to flush out of my system. But the house across the street from my parents' house was periodically empty, and I would hide my weed over there. Yeah, you had to you have to understand that Mary and I never took drugs at all. Yeah, they have no yeah, experience no. with it. And no experience <laughs> with alcohol, drugs. It was so it's it's very new for us. Yeah. Yeah, it was extremely new. <laughs> I was so clever. I, I got away with a lot of things. I would sneak out of the house. I'd jump. I'm like looking at the house. I would jump out of my bedroom window onto our balcony and then jump off of that and I would just leave. You know, things got really heated for a long time and it was just really stressful. It was really stressful. Um, let me get to some questions that you guys have. I screenshotted them. Did you ever think that Jess would be clean and living her best life one day? We had suspicions. That's all I can say. <laughs> I we thought have maybe I'd do it. We were just hoping. We were really hoping. Once hoping. you, you know, we never really had contact with you after you left. And I don't know if that was on purpose on your part. You did just were so messed up that you just didn't want to. But or you were so mad at me for kicking you out i didn't really kick you out but yeah. you made the decision to leave as soon as you turned 18 you were gone and i was like oh, it's I, a mutual decision me yeah. i was feeling so relieved because it, you stressed me out i'm sorry <laughs> i didn't not come around because i was mad at you i just didn't want you to see me because my addiction just took hold really badly i was using heroin intravenously from that point on mm -hmm. And I was really bad. Yeah. His coworker saw me occasionally and he would say, oh fuck, like this is really bad. You know, when, when you're not seeing someone on the, on the day to day, it's hard to know how bad they really are. So his coworker would see me and he just told me last night, there was a couple of times where he was like, oh my God, this is really bad. Like just seeing me around town. So that was hard. Does being a parent of an addict ever make you feel ashamed of who she is? That's hard. <laughs> are you ashamed of me? We're not ashamed of you. I never thought that. No, we, we were never really ashamed of no. you. We did always wonder what, when we didn't hear from you, what happened. But finally, you did reach out to us mm -hmm. when you had your life together, when you were starting to get your life together. Yeah, I didn't write them while I was in prison last <clears throat> time. They didn't know uh, that I was pregnant with Micah. I had to kind of just tell them after I, I was out and I was building a life and I had a good job. That's when I started to reach out to them. So there was years of me not talking to them, you guys. Yeah. Year, four years, five years. Yeah. It was a long least, time. Yeah. I just knew that coming around in my addiction wasn't in anyone's best interest and I didn't want them to see me like that. Um, what was your reaction to me going to prison? We're not surprised. <laughs> I can be honest. I had a hunch that it would happen to you. Yeah. You had a hunch? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
just the way you you kind of were stubborn you know did things your your you had a mindset that was just gonna possibly get you in trouble and I guess it did <laughs> you can't tell me anything that's how that's yeah. how I was yeah. and it was really tough for them yeah. you have to go through it Mm -hmm. So you get perspective. Yeah. Same with being a stroke survivor. He's a stroke survivor, and he's still here. And that's why his speech yeah. is maybe a little bit off, but he's so... You're amazing now. It his is coming speech four slowly. years ago was like, <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. But now it's amazing. You're talking yeah. so well. He's made so much progress. We're both survivors, huh? About four and a half years since my stroke, so... Yeah. yeah. Yep. We are stroke survivors. We're, we're survivors from a different reasons. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're both strong. I like to go for. I like to move forward and not look back, because I know how hard it could be. I don't want to go back to being in a hospital like you're in, in prison. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back there. Yeah. What is your favorite childhood memory of me? Moving out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you were really good with with uh, when Anna was born, when you Love know. Her. When we went to the hospital, you, you know, you went with us. You insisted on going with us mm -hmm. and didn't want to be left behind. And you know, when she came home, you were it so was a helpful. Day. I really just think, you know, I took I, Mary. I was with hoping my that would help you a little bit too. Yeah, you know, being around Anna. Um, I love my little sister, you guys. She not only is really smart, <laughs> but she was the <laughs> cutest freaking baby ever. And that was my first experience with a baby, and I was obsessed with her. I love her. To this day, I'm really close with her, and I Snapchat her every day. <laughs> <laughs> but I love her, and I loved her instantly. It was just instant. So We got up around 2 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. I was like, and realized time. that the, <laughs> the contraptions are coming slow, quickly. Yeah. So, Mom says to me, says, we got to get to the hospital. I said, are you serious? Can we go to bed? I said, no. You go to bed. <laughs> we got to go. So we left at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Got in my there Saturn. It's a beautiful day. We got there around. Saturn. She was born around 8.15 a.m. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect day for us. It was so awesome. And she was, yeah. like, so calm. No epidural, nothing. Just no. having a baby today. Like, so I would be, I was screaming. I already yeah. know. It hurts, you guys. Oh, my God. But she's, like... Just calm, just breathing, and she's calm. I was yeah. more panicked. I wasn't the one having a baby. Exactly. I do know the Yankees beat the Red Sox that day when Derek Jeter dove yeah. in the in the ball and got this big cut around his eye that same day. So I we're Boston one. fans. I was yeah, a big Red Sox are. fan, so I know that day. <laughs> Derek Jeter, who went to the Hall of Fame or will go into the Hall of Fame, he got that that cut around his eye. Same Isn't day. he so cute? I remember sitting, just watching baseball and trying to pass out because I was almost 12 since 3 o'clock in the morning, so. We were exhausted. <laughs> we were having a baby. Yeah. We were so tired. We were. I can remember that. Um, was there any point that you never thought Jess would recover? There was probably a lot of highs and lows. I always told yeah. Mary, I said, you know what, Jesse will come around. I know it will. But give Jessie. her time. Give her time, Jesse will be back. At some point. Yeah, that was our... You just knew. I, we I called her Jessie. <laughs> There's about a 90% chance. Not Jessica. Be, now you know her as Jessica. I love that you always had faith in me, and I knew that. I do have faith, yeah. I knew that you did, but it was just so hard to, like, admit that I was even as bad as I was. I'm smart. I knew it was bad, but I didn't want to admit that it was bad. So it was just really hard. Um, I had faith in you, too. No, I know you did. She tried. She took me to therapy. I mean, you really did try, and I hated I I therapy. I tried, and tried, and tried, mm -hmm. and the the breaking point was that that day you came home, and you know, she took my door off the hinges. You guys, I did, I did. <laughs> she she challenged me. She challenged me that I could not, because I knew she was hiding things, and I I knew. I had to do something, so I, she challenged me to, that I couldn't take his do her door off. I said, yes, I can. It's actually very easy to take a door it off the hinges. It is. I went and got the screwdriver, and off guessed? the door went, and that was it. She yeah. was out the I door after that. that. <laughs> yeah. She was so mad at me, but mm -hmm. I had to do something. I couldn't let her be behind closed doors anymore. I got to that point. So. It was really rough, and I'm sorry. I put you all through hell. <laughs> Like, looking back, I can see what an asshole I was. You know, I see it. And now I can't even imagine... It was tough. 
Anna was there too. Yeah, um, yeah, I do Anna have twin was. brothers also, but they weren't on scene yet. No, they, they <laughs> so weren't. it was really hard for everyone. You know, she's worried about you know her youngest and or her oldest daughter, and it's tough. There's also that dynamic there that you're not my biological mother. Mm -hmm. I'm his biological daughter, so you're yeah. the stepmom, and they're you know you kinda had you kind of were resistant to what Mary wanted step, to do too. The step yeah. uh, the step parents always get shafted. They do. I, I, I remember seeing this all the time with people that go through it. Yeah, you know? I tried to I tried a lot with Jim to, to tell him things and he just... I denied, I denied, he denied, I denied it. He denied it and denied it and, you know, I just... Maybe we could do things different? I don't really know. <laughs> you know, there it was tough, but we made so, it through. We did. we did. We're all alive and we, we have did. a good relationship now. We do. Um, and... They're, they're amazing grandparents. <laughs> so we have a good relationship now. Um, a lot of people want to know what your advice would be on dealing with a teenager that is obviously an addict. Don't because deny you, it. Don't deny it. Don't deny it. Go yeah. honest, honesty and get the help that she, he needs or she needs. Yeah. I mean, I, I, tried, to, I tried to get you help, mm -hmm. but um, you were just, you know, resilient each each time um, I don't know um, that's for me as the stepmom it was a little harder um, to work with Jim you know your mm -hmm. dad to to see that you needed help more than we could do we, step parents we, don't we love any less either and you tried you tried so hard and you didn't give up until I turned 18 and said, I'm out. Like she tried every single day from 13 to 18 to I help did. me. And I appreciate that. I know what, what that put on you. I wanted to open my home, you know. Yeah. I said, well, Jim, she's your daughter. Let, let's give it a, you know, let, sure. Let's there were try also it. people that said you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And you took me in anyway. Yeah, <laughs> there were. So she Definitely. was like, she would have been my biggest advocate and my biggest cheerleader if I allowed her to be that but I just put up doors and barriers between us. And it was it was my fault we didn't have a good relationship back then. She would, I was a basketball player in high school. She would come to every single game. She'd record my game so dad could see it. Like she would always have been there, but I stopped letting her in and I stopped letting her even help me or talk to me. And it was very toxic. Um, you did have more of a like, not controlling, you're a little abrasive with me. So moving <laughs> forward, how would you, like say one of the other kids had an issue, would you approach it the same way? Either of you. Um, I didn't think I was approaching it in the wrong way. <laughs> I knew s you needed some strong, you know, authority, but yeah. it was, coming from the wrong person it needed to come from yeah. your father you needed to hear it from him not me and it never came from your father so when it came from me I think that just made it that made it even ha harder for you to 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 let me do anything for you I mean I would probably fall to pieces if he yelled at me <laughs> <laughs> and he never did he yeah. never did and there was one time I did yell at you and came up the stairs I don't know what it was about I oh, me being an asshole. I, I kicked the door open. Yeah, remember he that does one? remember. That's one thing I can remember. Yeah, see, I was so upset what about something. I told you, you, he ran after you. I did run after you. Yeah. You closed the door. And I was so and slammed pissed. it in his face, and he got he was so mad. He he like kind of kicked the door in, and it broke the. It broke the wood along the door. And That's I got in trouble from that. Strong he I was. Got, <laughs> I got in trouble by some people. I don't know who. Me. It was. I got by you and was, yeah. And you might somebody might have. Girl, maybe. Yeah, it's pass. Yeah, you probably yeah. told them that he did that or something. But I God, mean, I sucked. Oh my God. We did have, you know, the social services did come to our home at one point. Right, I got in trouble um, for there. Somebody yeah. reported uh -huh. that we were being bad toward you yeah you imagine doing that that's well that's when oh. anna was young <laughs> and i'm like i was very scared that they would find something but they didn't find any it was unfounded yeah um because i they know could, i know they Mary. could see they could see you know how i was with anna 
you know, how I was as a mother, mm-hmm. you know, and how Jim was as a father. They weren't the problem. I was the problem. <laughs> like, yes, he kicked the door, but like I had, I made him do that. It just boiled over to the point where everyone lost their temper. Had they, did they ever hit me? No, he hit the door. That's, that's okay. I'm a conservative type of yeah, person. I'm, I was yeah. shocked when he did that. He's very passive. He was very mad. Passive aggressive. Yeah. I'm aggressive aggressive. So we were like uh, butt heads a lot. I I know that when you get to be 18 years old, I I told Mary about this that when you get to be 18 years old, just go out and do it your own way. You know, it's not because we're smarter than you, because we've been through. Uh, we're just older than you. Mm-hmm. We've been through it, so. You know, when you get to be 18 years old, just leave and and go at it. Which you did. <laughs> Which I did. That's, <laughs> what, it, that's what it came down to. Mm-hmm. And so Which nothing we could do, yeah. you know? It was like a waiting game for me just to turn 18 and leave. Exactly. And that could have cost, like, that could have cost you your marriage and your whole life because the strain that I put on them was just unreal. I'm sorry. I'm you know, so glad oh. that my marriage didn't and dissolve then because if that if that happened I wouldn't I wouldn't be alive today no because no. Mary and her uh, brother came back and said I'm having a stroke yeah without them if I was by myself yeah, I'd be dead but there have been so many times where Mary is his like warrior she's had to fight for him <laughs> There's so many things, and she's never given up on him, so you couldn't have found a better person to marry. And I wish I knew that when I was 10, when y'all got married. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to end today's video here. Hopefully I answered, you know, some hard questions. I know my dad, he's a radio guy. He's not a camera in my face guy. (laughs) So so thank you so much, both of you. I love you guys so much. And maybe I can get them back on the channel eventually. Okay. Take your glasses off so they can see. Do we look alike? Hi. (laughs) Bye. Bye, you guys. See you later.